Welcome back to Newfoundland for part two of Team Wild's carnivore moose meat special. Last time we harvested a young bull moose with a pretty challenging shot. If you haven't seen the video, click on this link. But getting the animal on the ground is just part of the process and a bull moose is a pretty substantial animal for one person to handle alone. But fortunately for us, Ironbound Outfitters master moose guide Donny Benoit knows exactly what to do. And he's going to run through just how easy it can be for one person to field dress a massive game animal like our moose. Tie him up so we can, when we got him in, they got a roll right out. So it makes right, it okay. a lot, much, much easier so to do. The first thing he needs to do is pull his back end down. Uh, okay, hold him right here. Yep. All right. Come up here now. I'll fix his head a little. Now I'll we'll tie a piece of twine to one leg. So you're tying the twine to the leg? Yeah, I'm going to tie him back so when we get and hold him up, he'll stay in position here. Much makes it much easier to get at. Oh, I'll grab that twine. Time down. So what Donnie's doing now is just trying to hold onto this leg to try and keep the animal upright. This is a deer, but it's a big deer. Now I get a lot of questions from people who want to go elk hunting or moose hunting saying, you know, it is very different from whitetail, it's different from fallow, it's different from red stags. How does one person go about dressing out an animal of this size? So I know I'm helping Donnie at the moment, but yeah. I'm about to let him take it away. Will he stay there? I'm going to have taken him up some more. But no, he's back late. And what I would do, first starting off, I'll start right by its jaw and I'll start peeling a patch right back through. That way it helps you when you start skinning it later. I'll show you, let me get started here. Now this is just preference, so I would do it. Oops, sorry. Knife's not cutting the best there. You gonna move on me? So basically, because this tag is for a bull as opposed to a cow. Uh, we need to leave some proof on the animal that this is actually a male, yep. uh, which means either a, a piece of the penis, one of the testicles. So what are you going to leave him this time, Donny? I'll leave him a piece of the penis, I guess. This thing to do. See, we're just going to pull the, pull the stomach out of him. There it comes here. That's been removed. Okay, just something for you guys back home. If you've shot a big bull and you want it shoulder mounting, don't do this. No. But we're not doing that. <laughs> we're, we're dressing out because this is meat. So taking this huge long patch of fur off its stomach gives you a lot more area to work with. Plus you're not getting all that nasty hair on the inside of the carcass and tainting it. So Donnie, what's next? Okay, I'm just gonna start uh, opening it up from the bottom here. Try and let it gut. Hang out. So see you using a gut hip there, Donny? Yeah. Take the pressure off. Probably start from the bottom. See there's quite a bit of pressure already built up there. The windpipe has got to come out now. I'm going to grab that old. First of all, I'm going to take the saw, go get my saw, and I'm going to saw this open here. 
Now you can see what well, the problem is sometimes when taking a long shot such as this. Now we had to take him because he was down here in the meadow. It's the best shot we could get from up there. There's too much spruce in the way to make our way any further down. Uh, but as you can see, it's punctured the front of the, the stomach, which has tainted the inside, in, inside of the carcass. But, you know, we can clean them up and everything that's on the outside, the four quarters and the, um, and the back straps, they'll still be good to eat. They haven't touched any of this, um, how should you say, rumen that's in there. As you can see in there, that's it. That is the, um, the entry wing in the chest. It's actually exited down here at the bottom, so you can see the path of the bullet. So it's only just next that yep. front half of the stomach, but it was enough to cause all of this mess. Yep. So um, chop placement once again, absolutely key. But most importantly, is getting the animal down humanely. Now the windpipe, so we can catch a hold. Long. I've got to keep cutting the diaphragm and eventually this supports itself out pretty good. That's why it's nice to have them in this position here. There we go. Make gravity do it too. Save me. Yeah, save me. I have a lot of work. Clean away anything you see that you wouldn't want. It's always nice to have a little bit of water around, you know, mm -hmm. for it help clean it out. Well, unfortunately, I didn't shoot him this time near a brook. <laughs> but what we'll do next time is we'll shoot him on. <laughs> That looks pretty clean, looks pretty empty. Once again, gravity's taken its course, done a lot of the work for, for Donnie. It's an easy job there, Donnie. Right? Oh, that's beautiful. We can actually just keep going there and open it up just a little bit here. I just, just follow close to the bone, really. That's all you have to do now. And you'll find that ball joint. And this will allow that, that haunch to sit yep. pretty open there. Yeah. And keep letting the meat cool down as quickly as possible is very important oh, to stop yeah. from spoiling. You know, if there's a frost in the air, if there's snow, then, then clearly it's going to cool down a lot quicker. But it's reasonably mild still, there's a little bit of moisture in the air. So the more open you can get these limbs, the more open you can get the chest cavity, the more open you can get the haunches, uh, the quicker the cool air is going to get to those, uh, that meat and the, and the less likely it is to spoil. The number one thing you need to do is, is get rid of the guts. Pull those things out of there, get the lungs out of there, because we all know we've all been up to deer that have been laying in a field in the summer for far too long, and it's just like playing a snare drum on its stomach. And you don't want to be putting your knife in there. It causes the sort of mess I've caused with my Hornady, uh, 180 grain interlock right now. So it looks reasonably clean now. We need to go and get the ATV. Um, so we'll be coming back. Uh, part three will be showing us how to quarter, um, debone, and then pack out the moose is right in front of us, Donny. So far, so good. Yeah, and it's important to remind you too that uh, once we get the gut out and we get it cooled down, very importantly, then we have to uh, cover it up because of uh, birds or eagles, crows, anything like that could we come and pick at this. Bear. Yeah, or bear, you know. But we'll cover this up. I got about a tarp, tarp bullet. So plain main thing is get this cool down. Then we'll put the tarp over it, and then uh, we'll go get the bite. Perfect. Let's do mm -hmm. it. So there we have it, one clean moose carcass cooling down and ready for deboning. Next time on Team Wild's Carnivore, Iron Bound Outfitter's Master Moose Guide Donny Benoit shows us how to remove and debone a moose haunch ready for packing out down the mountain. To book your moose hunting adventure of a lifetime with Iron Bound Outfitters, visit newfoundlandmoose.com. 
subscribe to Team Wild TV to stay up to date with our brand new and exciting lineup of shows for 2013.